Thanks for joining me with another video on KL Tech Videos. Today I'm going to be showing you Comga. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Comga is a media server for your ebooks, for your comics, magazines, anything like that uh, in certain formats such as PDF or EPUB and a few others. Where you could basically run your own ebook serving server. This is the demo site. Uh, and as you can see, it's full of these pre-populated uh, books. If we click into one, you'll be able to kind of get an interface of how to uh, function everything. Uh, and all you literally do on them is you can click uh, the read button here or the read button in here. And it will open up your ebook or PDF comic. And you can use the keyboard left and right mouse to read through. Simple as that. And that's what we're going to set up today. So let's get into it. So this is the introduction page on the comga.org website. As I explained, Comga is a media server for your comics, your magazines, your ebooks, and such. This is the GitHub page, and it's already got 3.1 thousand stars. It's even been forked over 199, 189 times as well. Now, this is under quite active development. Uh, we've had a release as early as last week. It has 402 releases. And if we check the oldest possible release, that goes back to August 2019. So 400 releases in that time, extremely active development for the project. So we're going to jump straight in to the Compose file. Um, and you're going to need three directories. You're going to need the configuration directory data directory, and then a directory for your books. Now we use Windows on our channel as our server. So if you have another one, you will need to slightly amend this, or even if you're going to use Docker volumes instead, we bind mount uh, as much as we can on this channel. So it'll be image, gots and conga, your three volumes. The default port on this project is 25600. I doubt many things will be this high uh, up in the port range being used on your system. That said, if it is, you can amend the left side to whatever port you'd like, but obviously leave the right side. We don't often put um, the user permissions um, and groups into our Compose files on this channel, but it already is pre-populated in the Compose, so we're going to leave that there. And then lastly, uh, in the environment, we're just going to set our time zone, which for me would be Europe, London, for you, whatever you are. Uh, and we're going to have restart unless stopped. Once you're happy with that, we're going to select all and copy. And then we're going to head over to Dockage. Dockage is a really cool companion for your Docker setup. It's very similar to Portana. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier for beginners to deploy projects. That said, you can deploy your Compose file however you like, whether it's in Portainer, whether it's Docker Compose Up, whatever you're doing, you can do that in Dockage. And I do have a video, which, by the way, I will link in the description below for you. I'm going to hit Compose, select all the pre-populated text, and paste. We're going to give the stack a name of Comga. As you can see, that's all populated in there for me. And then it's as simple as clicking deploy. Now, the real cool thing I do enjoy about Dockage is that this will now save this Compose file locally for me. Um, go and check out that video. It's a really cool guide. The difference between this and Portainer is that if you have to reinstall Portainer, for example, in some instances, you do lose access to your Compose um, stacks. Um, and it doesn't let you edit them anymore. This, no matter how many times you restart it, whatever you do with it, it'll always have access to that as long as the data is there. Uh, Docker desktop file sharing, because we're on Windows, we're using Hypervisor. Um, yes, we're going to allow that to share. And the second and the third directory. And that's it. We're, we're practically already done. Um, Comga is now set up on port 25600. We're going to let it wheel around in the terminal down here for a few seconds, just so that we know it's fully set up before we go and start clicking around on it. And when everything's kind of stopped whirling around down there, you kind of get an indicator that things are done. 
So in Dockage, all we do is uh, click on the uh, port number here. If you uh, don't have Dockage or you're not running that, just go to 25600 uh, in your browser, which will be simple as typing in localhost or the IP address. Um, the first step uh, in using Comga is to actually create your account. So if we just create a test user, that gets us in. And here we are. Now, this is as simple as just starting to put all of your ebooks, all of your PDFs, whatever you got going on, um, into the directory that we set up earlier on, which in our case would be my data, Keith, documents, Docker stuff, Comga, books. You can tie this into a uh, Reader, um, which is a uh, uh, an application that can help you download uh, ebooks legitimately, or you can just import your existing ones. Now, I've just moved over one of my Ubiquity uh, installation guides into my um, default folder. Um, so, literally, if we click on the plus symbol here and create our first library, let's just give it a generic name such as um, default. The root folder is going to be where we positioned um, our books folder, which was in data. So we go data and books. Because if we go back to the compose file, you can see data books was on the right hand side of our binded bind mount directory. Scanner. Scan on startup. Yes, interval we'll put to hourly because we don't know what we're going to put in here. PDF, EPUB, comic book archive. Yes. Um, compute hash pages, yeah, why not? Automatically repair things, yeah, why not? Metadata, yeah. ISBN barcodes, if they're there, yeah, why not? There we go. Uh, and our Ubiquity uh, books um, have actually just come into here now. Now, it may or may not find some metadata for that because it's not really an actual official book, um, you know, from Amazon or something. But um, if we click on it, uh, you'll see that it's the Ubiquity Networks UAP access point uh, for the Light 5 series. Oh, look, it has actually uh, given us a little page, probably from within the file. That looks quite nice. Uh, and if we click on Read, there we go. And if we click on Read, we will see that our file is still important currently. So that tells you that obviously if you've got a very uh, long book or in-depth PDF, it's going to need a few seconds just to analyze it. Um, and I suppose it's indicating that to us by uh, by going across the top there. Now, another cool website to go on for books as well uh, that are copyright uh, free, uh, for example, is the Gutenberg.org website. Um, and this website has over 70,000 um, free books. So you can literally find one like Moby Dick or The Whale by Herman Melville. Um, find the format you want. For example, we're going to do EPUB 3. We'll click on EPUB 3. We're going to go into our Comga directory and books, and then we're just going to rename the file, the title that it was on the website, and click save. If we head back over to uh, Comga, uh, and we press the three little dots down here, and we click scan library files, it should pick up our latest addition to our library. And if we click on it, look on default, see this is all our libraries, but if we we click in books here and we scroll down here we'll see Moby Dick and if we open that up page one chapter one uh, and I do have dark reader on in the background right now as an extension um, you can actually edit that in Comga as well uh, and it's simple I mean obviously look if we just find a random chapter and this is kind of how it looks, and it looks just as good as this on tablet as well, and on mobile. And this is your your server. Now, if you pair this up with a reverse proxy like Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, which I also have a, a link for in the description below, um, you can serve this, expose this to the world uh, for you, your friends, your family. Um, and it'll, it's just a great, cool little tool um, to kind of have your own book server, your own EPUB server. So this is where you can create uh, users as well. If you'd like to do that, you've got access to your server settings, account settings, media management, history, and obviously all the libraries that you are creating, which will all be populated here. 
So I hope you have uh, enjoyed this video. Please uh, like and subscribe to help grow my channel if you do like this content. Uh, and feel free to leave a comment in the description below if you have any tips on how I can improve. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, P.S. Thanks for listening to me with this voice. Uh, I have had a cold for the last week. So thank you again.